Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. We are so happy you've joined us today. I'm Orlina Brazier. I am here with a very special guest, John W. Holdsworth Sr., who is the owner and founder and CEO of Bavard Outpatient Alternative Treatment. And I love the initials for that. It's B-O-A-T, BOAT. And I'm going to have you explain a little bit about that. But before you do, I want to let you know you'll want to stay tuned because we're going to talk about substance abuse in this program and the dangers of fentanyl drug abuse, which I know nothing about. And I'm very anxious to hear about it okay. from you. I know that it's it's been in the paper. But before we get to that, thank you so much, yeah, sir, fine. for My coming, pleasure. John. We appreciate having you. Yeah. And um, I would like for you to tell the people, our viewing audience, a little bit about yourself and what brought you to this point and the BOAT. <laughs> the BOAT program, as it's commonly known in Brevard County, uh, oh. is actually a program that I started in 1980 uh, for adolescents that were just having problems with in school or home different oh. things and I would take kids out on my sailboat wow. uh, in the mid 80s uh, some of you may remember when hospitals popped out of the ground there were five right here in the Orlando and area five psych hospitals uh, and many kids were ending up in these psychological hospitals like therapy type things it was wow. very expensive the average was about $2,000 a day. And I licensed for substance abuse at that time, hmm. uh, really to keep kids out of the deeper ends of the treatment system. And we're on the shallow end. Uh, in, uh, shortly after that, we uh, started seeing adults too. A friend of mine from Harris Corporation asked me to see adults too. Uh, so we, we really do a variety of things with our boat program. Uh, we have an adolescent substance abuse program that involves on a weekly basis a group session, a individual session with a therapist. All of our therapists are master's degree and above. And a random drug testing. Plus, we require our parents to attend a parent group oh, at the great. same time the kids are in their group. Uh, then we have an adult substance abuse program, which is all people that bring themselves in. So it's a very nice group. It's people that are know they have an issue, want to do something about it, and are willing to do something about it. Uh, so that makes a really nice group of folks. The kids, most of them don't want to be there when they first get there. <laughs> Once they've been there a while and realize we're not the enemy, they're okay with it. Yeah, uh, that, that you're trying to help right. them. The, so uh, you do inpatient and outpatient? Strictly, strictly outpatient, oh, outpatient in Brevard County. Okay. I do own part of an inpatient program in New mm -hmm. Jersey, a uh, 120 bed facility there. Wow, God uh, bless you. Then we also have a totally separate DUI program that we do that uh, is for people that have had a uh, driving under the influence. Uh, wow. charge on them and they have to go through his treatment. We're just one of many providers for that. But we don't mix our people. Uh, the people that are adult people are all people that want to be there. So they're not court ordered, they're not angry, they don't, they're not <laughs> doing it for someone or something else. Uh, our program is a little different than most. Uh, there's certain things we do that not everybody does. Uh, one is it's very relaxed. So we're not in people's face telling them what's wrong with them. Most of our people are already beating themselves up plenty. They don't need our help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, they're doing a fine job. So you kind of love them and help right. nurse and them back second, to health. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> we're very performance-based. So we go by what people do, not so much by what they say. Wow. Uh, when I first started in the substance abuse, uh, I had a friend of mine that at that time, he's deceased now, but at that time he was in it almost as long as I've been now. Wow. Uh, but uh, I asked him what I needed to know. And he told me, he said, you don't need to know that much, you'll be fine. He says, you only need to know three things. And I thought, well, maybe I could remember three. <laughs> uh, so I said, okay, what are they? He says, well, one is people on drugs lie. Oh boy. Two was people on drugs lie and three was People, people on drugs oh, lie. That's easy to remember. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and I thought, okay, I can remember that. But uh, probably the best advice I ever had. Uh, we instruct our folks that work for us, and this is how we treat people. 
we're kind, we're understanding, we're empathetic, we're sympathetic, and suspicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we tell our parents, too, to be that way, too. Uh, yes. So it's, it's just a little bit different. So we're very performance-based. Wow, that is so great, so John. We Thank want people you. to identify what their needs and wants are and yeah. then make plans towards those. Wow, that is awesome. Okay. So we know whether we're getting somewhere. So it's not like yes. we see people for three years or something like that. It's, it's usually relatively short term, just a matter of a few yes. months. Well, that's great. We want to get into our first topic sure. right now about the dangers of fentanyl, the drug fentanyl. Okay. And you were telling me a little bit about it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, because I've read it in the paper. That's one reason we wanted to mm -hmm. talk about that, because it's very out there. So can you give us uh, information about what is fentanyl? Uh, it's a very serious, strong painkiller. Okay, and when you think of the drugs that are being abused that we commonly know of, mm -hmm. which we didn't know of that long ago, is that their painkillers are one of the top of the list. You have opiates, your Percocet, Oxycontin, Roxycontin, uh, even Tylenol 3 is an opiate. And those have been very abused, especially in Florida, for years now. What is a Tylenol 3? Uh, they it's, have it's more a, than... It's a Tylenol with opiate in it. Oh, okay. So these are all opiate-based <laughs> painkillers. Uh -huh. uh, fentanyl is also a very serious painkiller. It usually comes in a patch. Uh, that like if I had a serious surgery, a back surgery or something that was going to be long-term pain, uh, I would probably be wearing a fentanyl patch. Uh huh. Uh, and it's kind of a gel type thing. People uh -huh. actually, well, that if they're highly addicted, will suck on them and all oh kinds. Oh boy. Of <laughs> what we do need to, what people need to know about substances, just in general, is that the faster they get in the system, the more addictive they are. So when we talk about people that uh, use opiates, like heroin is mm -hmm. an opiate, uh, wow. people normally start out, uh, I'll use the pill situation, we had pill mills all over Florida. Uh, up until three years ago, over 90% of all the prescription opiates sold in the United States from Florida to Alaska were sold in Florida. Wow. And we had a, a bill signed to the governor signed a bill to track these people that write the prescriptions to make sure. You probably remember coming down the highway, you'd see yes, uh, pain building. management, yes. these kind of things. Uh, but the progression is to take the pill, and then people build up a tolerance. Then they'll crush it up and snort it, because it gets in the system faster. Uh -huh. Okay, And then they'll liquefy and inject it. Oh my uh, heroin's a big problem now. Fentanyl, I really haven't seen that much of that in my office right now. I think I have three or four people out of 50 or 60 that are doing the fentanyl. But it's out there, and people will try anything. Are and, the youth getting in touch with it? Uh, I haven't seen any in my office. That doesn't mean it's not happening. I think right. it is. And if it's out there, they're going to try it. Kids will try anything. just about anything. Uh, so there's, there's a progression of drug use. One of the things I always like to do with our adult clients that come in, these people are coming in, they're begging for help. And some of them have lost a lot, their house, their spouse, their job, their watch, their car. Because they're addicted to Right, and they, all their money is going to the substances. Mm. Uh, most people start with either alcohol or marijuana. That's the majority of folks. And I'll always ask the same question. When you were 14, 15, 16, first started using, if I would have told you then that 10 or 15 or 20 years from now that you'd be shooting up heroin, what would you have told me? And everybody answers exactly the same. I would have told you you were crazy. Wow. I was scared to death of needles. I would never, ever do any of that. So what it tells us is that people end up where they never thought they were going to be. Wow. And these are mind-altering substances, so they change how people think. Uh, the fentanyl patches, we do see some of it. Uh, it's not nearly as big of a problem as heroin. Heroin has jumped ahead of the painkiller pills. Wow. Oxycontin, because 
it's cheaper. But isn't fentanyl supposed to be deadlier than heroin? Oh yeah, if you abuse any of these drugs, will kill you. Will kill you, right? right. So you there's, there's, it's just a very dangerous drug. It's harder to get hold of, but uh -huh. it will become easier because there's always somebody that's willing to write a prescription for it, and people that are willing to sell their prescription. So they'll go get their script filled and give it or sell it to somebody else. Wow. So how can somebody get totally free from that might be watching and they know that one of their this relatives is, or family members? This is a, a dilemma. Uh, depending on the level of addiction and the substance that they're using. Uh, for example, cocaine is not physically addictive. Okay, opiates are terribly physically addictive, as is alcohol. Uh, so if a person is using and it's always kind of a judgment call how much they're using, whether they need to be inpatient, medically supervised detox. And that's where they're in a hospital. There's somebody watching them basically 24 hours a day to make sure really that they don't die. But they have to and want very, to be helped. It's very stressful to try mm -hmm. to do it on their own, which is almost impossible. It's, right. Everyone describes when they detox themselves it's the worst case of flu they ever had. Wow. Okay, so they're nauseous, they're diarrhea, they're sweats, yeah, they're just, just miserable. So, uh, but there is help out there. Oh, there's lots of help. And there's plenty of detox facilities around. Around there's, everywhere, so people could get on the internet and find oh, a place easily, close easily. to them. Easily, easily. Now, in our program, we don't do detox. We refer mm -hmm. for it. Oh. Okay, and then we pick the people up on the way out. We do not do medication. There's also good medications for the opiates, too, uh, that help people get off of them. Uh, oh, that's good news. Uh, there's a uh, sublingual film that people can take, uh, Suboxone or Subutex. Uh, the problem we have with some of that is when it, when it first came out, I don't want to get in trouble with anybody here, yeah. but the protocol was three to six months. Wow. Okay. Now they're saying you can use it for maintenance. Well, people are selling their drug so you know the longer they can sell it they the better see, off yeah. they are uh, wow well i want to thank so the fentanyl is really it's a big issue yes it's not as Beautiful. big as some of the others and they're all but it's probably getting deadly. there it will yeah it <laughs> yeah will. because it's one of the newest right. drugs i guess out that I, that well, i've been that's hearing not really about new probably drug. not new it's but been <laughs> here for a long long time right but, but it, to get on the street it's relatively new yeah well thank you so much john for sharing with us about uh fentanyl and the other drugs right. of abuse that are out there and that people can get help that's very good real quick we're going to run to a 30 second spot and we'll be right back looking for these you drive buzzed could be one very expensive ride First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hello and welcome back to joy in our town. I'm Orlina Brazier and I'm here with John Holdsworth Sr. And he is the owner and co-founder and CEO of Bavard Outpatient Alternative Treatment. Has done all kinds of things and worked with delin juvenile delinquents and he's a trainer for substance abuse programs. And we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to share with our viewing My audience. Pleasure. So thank you. And now we're gonna talk about the effects of alcohol abuse um, on adolescents and people in general, but especially focus more, okay. especially since you've worked with the ju okay. juvenile delinquent children. Let me just say about kids in general, to start with, is you would be hard pressed to find an adolescent that didn't use some sort of substance or at least try it, okay? Uh, and most people start with alcohol, either alcohol or marijuana. Alcohol is the most abused substance in the world. Wow. Okay? We don't think of it that way. It's a legal because substance. Because it's legal, yeah. And people think it's relatively harmless. Uh, I think I mentioned to you earlier when we were chatting is that 
that I have a slanted view on it. Uh, some people go along and they never have a problem with alcohol at all. The problem with adolescents is, and if you think of it, they don't do anything in moderation. <laughs> Okay, they drive fast, they sneak out the window, <laughs> they jump off the causeway, they, they do they all do these things, and that's part of being an adolescent. Being a little rebellious. Right, okay. it's, it's yeah. being an adolescent. So things don't happen in moderation for them. So they're not going to have uh, one or two drinks. <laughs> okay, they're and they'll... Drink one or two bottles. They'll, whatever they can get, they'll drink until they're totally intoxicated. Uh, so it's pretty rare that, first of all, you'll find a kid that's not going to do it. Uh, I would challenge anybody to go to a adolescent party where there wasn't at least alcohol there and probably some other things oh, boy. that you'd have a hard press. And I don't care whether it's the church group or the the worst group, <laughs> okay? Uh, what I find with adolescents, though, and that I think this is a really important part, kids that are busy, okay? Mm. And it doesn't matter what they're busy with, whether it's sports or clubs or the chess club or rocket club or music or with or the church or music or anything those normally are not the kids that are ended up abusing and addicted to substances uh, and kids get addicted faster and we need to realize if we think about a kid in general uh, if a, a parent looks at their kid and they see him i was telling look at a picture when they were 11. And look at a picture now when they're 16, 17. Oh, boy. Okay? This is just a few years. There's a lot of changes there. So when you put something like alcohol in this body that doesn't have homeostasis, that stability of the body, you get a lot of bizarre reactions. The problem with adolescents is because they are so in such turmoil physically and usually emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to tell whether they really have a substance problem or not until they're clean for a while. Wow. Because you're dealing with this unstable thing anyhow. But kids are going to use alcohol. It's very dangerous. They drive with it. They, they do things that most of people that were normal social type drinker would never do. Yeah, they make bad you know, choices. They're not going to get behind the car you're driving your car when you've been, they've been drinking for hours, you know. Well, you're not uh, normal. supposed to. There's a few that do, don't they? Yeah, well, yeah, we have plenty <laughs> of those, DUI, too. So yeah. <laughs> I, uh, with our DUI group, I, yeah. you know, sometimes we get people that they have two or three <laughs> DUIs. And I, I use a Midwestern saying, it's a, a Missouri st saying all the time is, the, the first time the mule kicks you in the head, it's the mule's fault. <laughs> After oh that, <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, so, but the, the kids, the problem is that they're, they get into things. First, they're going to try more. Secondly, they're going to get into them faster because they don't do things in moderation. And alcohol is huge. Alcohol is everywhere. Yeah. Okay, it's all over. It's in the house. Usually. Yeah, it's in their it's house. It's, it's in all kinds of things. It's as far as parents are concerned, Parents are usually the last ones to know that their kids have an issue. But uh, do you really believe that? Because yeah, I really alcohol. do. Because I, I mean, I see parents in there in my office that are just crying and they're beating themselves up. I should have known this. And but if you think of it, who wants to think negatively about their own kids? Nobody. Yeah. Okay. So we have that suspicious part that we tell parents we need to be a little bit suspicious. You know, people on drugs lie, people that drink, drug, and, but urine screens don't lie. That's right. <laughs> but how, how is a parent to deal with this? We need to talk about well, that's, some let's just say in change, general, some just good quick, points. Quickly, and it's not a real quick thing okay. I can do, but uh, when you think of what people want for their parent, for their kids, we all want pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. We want our kids to be reasonably healthy, happy people that grow through adolescence, childhood and adolescence into responsible human beings yes. that participate that in society <laughs> in society in positive ways, are not involved in systems like the legal system. Well, how do you get that? You know, it's nice to say that, but how do you get it? Well, I know if I go around behind my kid telling them how to do, what to do, when to do, it's not going to work. Mm -mm. First of all, I can't be there all the time. 
Secondly, if they're an adolescent, they'll probably resent it. <laughs> and lastly, it's a disservice. Well, they become rebellious, right. don't they? It's a disservice to the kid. Also, no, if I never say anything, that's not going to work. So what do you do? I use an example of what all of us, most parents do. If my kid comes home late, they walk in the door, I go, you're late. <laughs> Why are you late? You're grounded. And I'm thinking, I just fulfilled my parental responsibility here. Okay, but if you think of the ultimate goal, the responsible person, I did everything wrong. First of all, I identified the problem, taking some ownership off of them and onto me. Secondly, I asked for an excuse. When you ask why, it might be interesting, it might even be true. It doesn't change the fact that they're late. And then lastly, I set the consequence. So I took full responsibility for that too. So where's the kids part here? They're not getting on the phone the next day going, oh, I blew it, I didn't come home on time. They're going, my dad did this to me. <laughs> oh, okay, boy. so mm. the model we instruct our parents to do is to keep the responsibility where it belongs. On the child. At the top of the model is to stay calm. A couple of reasons for that. One is, if I'm a yeller and screamer, what do you think my kid's going to be? <laughs> and and exactly. I'm modeling being calm. And if you're, they're not listening to you. You don't listen to people that are yelling at you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you took that same circumstance, the questions become different questions. Kid walks in the door. I go, what time is it? I don't know. <laughs> well, go look at the <laughs> clock. Well, it's 1230. What time did you say you'd be home? 12, but everybody else gets to stay out as late as they want. I don't think it's fair. And then and, and we tell them yeah. parents don't even go there. The next question is, did you do what you said you were going to do? No, but I'm almost 18. I think I should be able to stay out later anyhow. Then the next question is where all the kids we see fail, and that's a value judgment. Is what you did right or wrong? Well, I don't see what's so wrong with it. I think I should be able to stay out later anyhow. Then we back up. Did you do what you said you were going to do? No. Is that right or wrong? Very Pretty hard to defend that. Then the next question is not why didn't you. The next question is to include the kid in the consequence within that household. So I would say, what should happen? And I'll get nothing, I don't know, <laughs> you're the parent, whatever you say. And usually by then you're pretty irritated and the temptation is to go, okay, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. Uh -huh. But it's a setup, it keeps the parent the bad guy. So if they won't come up with anything, we instruct parents, give them a choice of two or three things that are equal, that fit that particular violation. Not going to ground them for six months for being a half an hour late. They came home, <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, so it needs and to they were fit. Alive. <laughs> and everybody's house is different. What's acceptable at one will be different than another. If if they won't pick, then give them a choice of two or three. That, so they're still the one picking. So at my house, they might pick. Okay, I'll come home a half hour early next time. Half an hour late, come home a half hour early. Uh, and then I call, this is my own rule, I, I've never read it anywhere, <laughs> is I call it the rule of three with adolescence, is if it's not said three times, nobody heard it. <laughs> so we already agreed on it once, so I'd say, tell me what we agreed on, so I know you know. You know I have to come home half hour early because I was late. And the parent should restate it, but how they state it is important, because you want to keep the responsibility on the kid. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, okay, here's how I understand our agreement yeah, then, because you, chose to stay out late, you've decided to come home a half hour early next time. <laughs> In other words, this is you doing this to you, not me doing this to you. It's a very effective model. It takes lots of practice. Wow, that is excellent. Yeah. I have never heard that, but I think that's going to be so valuable to our precious Well, it's good. Our parents audience. love it. And actually, once kids realize they have some control over what happens to them, they're okay with it. I won't say they love it. That, that would be no. a misnomer. Uh, Again, though, what we were talking about before the alcohol, almost everybody starts with alcohol. It's either alcohol or marijuana. When kids start, that's big. We know nationwide when people change schools. So when they move into a new area, they go from elementary to junior high, junior high to senior high. That's when they're most likely to use. That's a nationwide statistic. Uh, and it makes sense that it's very easy to fit into the drug user group because okay, you don't have to live up to any, you don't have to be a, a student or an athlete or whatever to happens to be. Right. Drugs it, or they'll, alcohol. They'll accept anybody that's using. Yeah, it's uh, almost like a de demonic We see thing. in our area, and I'm not sure if it's over here or not, but 
a lot of alcohol use with, uh, seems like a lot of the athletes are more likely to use that. And I don't know if that's a true statistic or not, but that's my observation. That's so amazing yeah. being that they... Well, I think sometimes they know they're going to be drug tested. Alcohol clears oh. the system in, oh. in basically overnight, although we can now test it for up to five days with a lab. Oh, you can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like DNA, they can do almost anything yeah, right. nowadays. Yeah, but it's expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive. Yeah, but that's interesting that right. they would do that, being that they're sports right. oriented. And right. I don't think people realize the effect of alcohol on their body and on their liver and on yeah, their it, organs. It tears them up, especially long-term use or excessive use. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, people die from alcohol poisoning. And then you've yeah. got adolescents that are drinking as much as they can. Wow. Uh, in our business, uh, and this not just my office, but just about anywhere, mm -hmm. is, you know, we say there's no such thing as one drink. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because That's true. It, it is a mind altering substance. So you start thinking differently after you've had a drink. So you're more likely to have more. And you're thirsty, so you're just drinking. Right. right. <laughs> and then pretty soon you're right. really mind altered. My goodness, this has been so good. We just have 90 seconds left. I was okay. just going to have you say one thing for no more than a minute because we okay. got to go I'll, out. I'll try to be short. Yes. Uh, I think, as far as parents are concerned, just really be alert to your children. Know who they're with, where they are. Lots of times it's easier now. You can track your kids with the phone if you want. You know, that's tells, true. Tells you right where they are. Uh, and, you know, be supportive of them. And if you can get them involved in activities, find something that they really like to do, mm -hmm. let them go. Let, let them have it. Okay. That is great. Uh, right. Wow. John, how wonderful. We appreciate what you've done to better the community, the state, uh, your town. You're in Bavard County right. and what you're doing there. And that you've worked with these precious juvenile delinquent boys. And I'm sure you've seen many lives change around. Yeah. And so thank you so much for training people on how to work with substance mm -hmm. abuse. And you actually train counselors, correct? Uh, we have so, interns in our office. Well, from, thank from you all so much. Country. I just My really want to thank you for being uh, here with pleasure. us you have been a blessing today and we thank you so much for joining us and we hope you'll join us next time be blessed and go have joy in your town god bless you bye, -bye. this program has been sponsored by the trinity broadcasting network and is made possible by your telethon dollars your continual support can keep joy in our town coming to your home every week write to joy in our town Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.